Hi there, Dr. Saraswati from Department of Resource Management, Avnashlingam Institute for Home Science. The topic of the day would be Retail Management, Development of Retailing, Methods, Small and Large Scale of Retailing. As you all know, retailing provides a crucial link between the producers and the consumers in a modern market economy. So the performance of this sector has a strong influence on the consumer welfare and retailers not only provide consumer with a wide range of products but also a wide range of complementary services which lead to a more informed choice and a greater convenience in shopping. They also provide the producers with much needed information on the consumer demand pattern. Productivity and efficiency in retail operations lowers the price levels and reduces the distortion in the price structure. Through the backward and forward linkage, performance of retailing services both affects the performance of the interlinked sectors such as tourism, recreational, cultural services, manufacture of the consumer goods, agro good products in the industries etc. The word retailing comes from the French word retailer which means to cut a piece off. This set of business activity adds to the value of the products and services given to the consumers. The retailing sector in India has undergone a significant transformation in the past 10 years. Traditionally, an Indian retailer sector is being characterized by the presence of large number of small unorganized retailers. With the high GDP growth, increased consumerism and liberalization of the manufacturing sector, India has been portrayed as an attractive destination for foreign direct in investment FDI in retailing. However, at present, this is one of the few sectors. David Gilbert defined retailing as any business that directs its marketing efforts towards satisfying the final consumer based upon the organization of selling goods and services as a means of distribution. Retailing involves all the activities related to direct selling of products, services to the ultimate consumers or the users of the products for personal, non-business purpose. Any organization, it may be a wholesaler, manufacturer. Now, the retailing business, if it sells products or services to the final customers or the consumer through any method like direct mail and telephone or vending machines, etc. What could be the functions of retailer? Now, a retailer can provide personal services to all consumers. He can facilitate standardization and grading of goods. He can also undertake physical movement and storage of goods and they assemble goods from different suppliers and wholesalers. They keep ready stock for goods to be supplied to the consumer and they extend credit facilities to the consumer too. They create demand by presenting window display and events etc. They also understand the sales promotional activity. Retailing in India uh, employment to about 7% of total workforce in the country and contributes to about 14% of the GDP to India. It took 10 years for the first 2500 organized retail stores to get emerged in India. The next 2500 could be e get easily added in the next 5 years and formats new to India market have placed and or have emerged rapidly over the past 10 years. Evolution of retailing in India, every retailing brands for retailing and merchandise be effectively displayed. The distribution channel starts from the manufacturer to the wholesaler and then to the retailer and finally to the consumer. Money is not stagnant at a particular point. Retailers are the beneficiaries from the consumers and from the manufacturers. Difference in the flow of money and there is an increase in the value of goods and services. Breakage of bulk of the product and it is easy to compare between the brands that are possible with retailing and it provides assortment. After a buy, overhauls like that of service and maintenance where the retailer gives a complete information about the product. The origin of retails are old trade as well itself. Now, barter was the oldest form of trade. For centuries, most merchandise was sold in the marketplace or by peddlers. Medieval markets were dependent on local sources for supply of perishable food because journey was far too slow to allot for the long distance transportation. The peddler who provided the people with the basic goods and necessity that they could not be self-sufficient in followed one of the earliest forms of retail trade. Even in the prehistoric time, the peddler traveled long distance to bring products to locations that were in short supply. They could be termed as early entrepreneurs who saw the opportunity in serving the needs of the customer at a profit. Later, retailers opened a small shop stocking them with the such produce. As towns and cities grew, these retail stores began stocking up a mix of convenience merchandise and enabling the formation of high street bazaars that became the hub retail activity in every city. 
In 1991, we had about 12 to 14 million retail stores, which were run by the families, and two thirds of the store were been in the rural area. Now, what could be the traditional retail format which has been followed in India? It is important that for centuries now, India has been operating with her unique concept of retailing. Retailing in its initial period was a witness at the weekly hats or gathering in a marketplace where the vendors put on the display they produce. Then the market saw the emergence of the local banyas and his neighbor Kirna. shop the batter would be considered as the oldest trade of retailing since independence retail in india evolved to support unique needs of a country given its size and complexity hats mandis and melas have been a part of india's landscape they will continue to be the present in most part of the country and form the essential part of life and trade in various areas emergence of organized retail in india now the emergence of first phase of organized retailing retail in retailing in india can be traced back while shopping center came into existence in the year of 1869 in mumbai with crawford market After that in the year of 1874 hog market market clearly and better known as new market came into existence in calcutta and this particular shopping center was designed by the east indian railways company and architect r r r banya and was named after the municipal commissioner of calcutta sir stott hog The tenant mix of this particular shopping center is unique as it had a large number of 200 stalls which were organized in a uh, order of merchandise there are rows of stalls dealing with one particular line of goods Tracing the emergence of the new market, a retail researcher, Christine Ferdi, has observed in her uh, article on uh, 1979 as the most complex retail business of late 19th century Calcutta, and which were to dominate the modern retail sector were the departmental store. The early seed of the so-called speciality malls can be traced to, to the shoppers or the shopkeepers who stock the goods of the same product category in a particular locality. If one were to go back to the early of 80s, it can be said that the organized retail, to a great extent, was visible in the functioning of stores such as Neligris and Spencers in Chennai. These stores later evolved into a multi-chain outlet and were the first to bring in on the onset of organized retail in India. The evolution of PDS, popularly the public distribution system of grains in India, have its origin in the rationing system introduced by the British during the World War II was an example for the single largest retail chain in the country. The canteen stores department and the post offices in India are also among the largest network of outlets in the country. The Kadi and the village industry popularly the KVIC was set during the post dependent day it has got more than 7000 stores across the country while independent retail stores like Vivek's Nalis have existed in India for a long time now Reliance Garden Silk Mills Madura Garments Arvind Mills etc have also set up their showrooms for retail sales of their branded products During the past 2 years there has been tremendous amount of interest in the Indian retail trade from global majors as well all over the years of international brands like McDonald's, Kawasaki, Lacoste, Domino's, Pepsi, Benetton among the host of others have come into India and have thrived very well in India. Now retail formats in India. Evolution of retailing is mainly classified in three stages which were started in early 80s and before 90s. Retailing was synonymous in those stages by the peddlers, vegetable vendors, kirana stores, small grocery stores. One person running a small store Consumer durable stores in nearby towns, fragmented marketing and the people were also much unstructured. More of the organized retailing was then the uh, was possible when the manufacturers started owning the retailing outlet like that of Bombay Day, Raymond, Eskimos. Now the profile of the consumers changed in 1990. In India, at present, retailing activities are being carried through a wide variety of format, ranging from the periwala in streets to the modernized malls in the metro city. However, from the study point of view, these formats can be easily classified into the following groups. and the groups are been shown in the table which is seen below now looking into the traditional sector the itinerant salesman it is a type of direct selling which stated centuries back it is an example of door to door office to office delivery or marketing morning milkman is a famous example of this particular category 
This type of format has been very popular throughout India in coping with the daily needs. Next, hats. Hats are the unique examples of traditional malls in India. Just like a mall, different sellers sell different types of items along with the sale of vegetables, fruits, wheat, chat, etc. Some and, uh, entertainment arrangements are also made in hats. There is always a tendency in the rural as well as in the semi-urban area in India for visiting these hats with family members as a part of picnic come purchasing program. In fact, hats are periodic markets at a particular place and time organized once in a week or a fortnight. In other words, the term hats refers to location with witnesses of people gathering of buyers and sellers at fixed time and at a fixed location. Next would be Mela. Melas are nothing but fairs and they can range from commodities fair to a religious fair. Virtually every state in India has Mela for which it is known for. It is estimated that more than 2500 Melas are held annually in the country. It is estimated that the average outlet in every Mela would be more than 800 and the average per sale per Mela would be more than Rs 143 lakh. At the government level, a member of fairs such as book fair, trade fair and specific commodity fair are being organized by the trade fair authority of India. Next category would be Mandis. Mandis are markets set up and regulated state government for the sale of agricultural produce directly from the farmers. These Mandis are playing significant role in providing a better prices to the farmers. Next would be established uh, formats. The est under the established formats, the first one would be the kiosk. A kiosk is a small freestanding pavilion or a stall uh, often open on one or more sides and are used for the information sales and promotion. Generally, a kiosk is being placed in a shopping center, a bus stand or nearby the prospective customer. Next would be the Kirna shop or the independent store. This is one of the most important and popular established format of retailing in India. These shops are usually the shops with a, a very small area, stocking a limited range of product varying from region to region according to the need of the clientele and the whims of the uh, owners. Next is a cooperative shop or the government organization. The cooperative stores of India are the result of the cooperative movement that can be traced by, way back to the pre-independence period. They emerged as a reaction to the federal system and to place the fruit of labor in the hands of the producer himself and to make himself very relevant. A consumer cooperative is generally formed either because of dissatisfied consumer whose needs are not fulfilled by the existing retailer or an account of initiative by the enlightened consumer. The next are the emerging stores under which we have the supermarket or the hypermarket. These are large stores more than of uh, 90,000 square feet and self service stores selling a variety of products at uh, discounted rates. Now, the supermarkets tend to be located in the key residential market and the malls offer a competitive price due to the economics of sales in the logistic and purchasing. The format is new to India and some important players in the field are food world and big bazaars, etc. And Indian supermarkets are smaller than the other countries. Departmental store, these are large stores primary sell non-food items such as apparel, footwear and household product. They stock multiple brands across the product category though some of them focus as their own store labels. Some departmental store chains were opened in India. Examples would be Shopper's Shop, Westside and Ebony. Now the next would be the specialty chains and these chains focus or these outlet focus on a particular brand as product category usually non-food items and are located on high streets and in shopping malls. The most famous specialty chains include GAP, Levi's and Benetton. Now the next would be the discount store. A general merchandise or a retailer offers a great variety of merchandise limited service at a lower price. Margin markets are operating in this format in India and is limited service in exchange for a lower price. They occupy an area between 80,000 square feet to 1,50,000 square feet. We would next move on to the innovative discount operations under this discount store. The first one would be the off-price store who sell at a lower price mainly to satisfy the man psychologically for a consumer surplus and sovereignty. These retailers buy goods at prices well below the margin or the original wholesale rate and sell them to the customer at a lower price than the regular price. The next would be the closeout store. 
did they feature the manufacturer's leftover the third is a warehouse clubs only members of the clubs are allowed to enter the vast shopping arena which deal mainly with the non food merchandise here the customer can make only the bulk purchases as they do not offer any customer service the customers even have to do a self packing example like in relens you pack your own vegetables and fruits etc the payment is also always is in cash the next would be wholesale cash and carry the wholesale cash and carry operation is defined as uh, any trading outlet where goods are sold at a wholesale rate for the retailers and for the business to buy the transactions are only for the business purposes and not for any personal consumption next would be the flea market a temporary shop which spring up in the parking lots roadsides etc so they can be internal or external a shopping selling like ban hussein shirts for 3 days is a flea market now swap markets are nothing but the shops near the bus stop or the parks can be combined with a shop plus entertainment Branches are representative shops of a parent shop say an additional unit started away from the city pen ops or the twig stores these are like branch shops and they are geared to the needs of the community in which it has been located they are the small units of departmental store but unlike the branch they carry only one classification of the merchandise like you have for example the kannan departmental store you which is a, which has got a specialty store for vegetables and fruits alone as a separate store the next would be the convenience store it is a retail business of less than 5000 square feet with a primary emphasis on providing the public a convenient location to purchase quickly an assortment of food gasoline or other consumable product they are usually open 7 days a week for extended hours next would be pds or the fair price shop pds or the public distribution system would easily emerge as a single largest retail chain existing in the country the evolution of pds of grains of india has its origin in the rationing system which we saw in the earlier phase of this particular chapter The system however continue to remain an essential urban oriented activity in fact towards the end of the first five year plan and the system was closing its relevance due to comfortable fruit grains availability thus by the end of second five year plan pds had changed from the typical rationing system to a social safety making available food grains at a fair price so that access of household to the food grain could be improved and such distribution could keep on a check on the speculative tendency in the market the next is a specialty store a specialty store in retail shop is displaying merchandise which have a narrow product line specializing in a particular type of merchandise and offering specialized services to the customers generally these shops concentrate on specific items such as apparel jewelry fabric sporting good furniture etc Speciality shops are further classified into degrees of their narrowness in the product. Example, a clothing shop would be a single line shop, a men's clothing shop would be a limited time shop, and a men's shirt store would be a super speciality shop. Such shop would always have significant role in relating to the customer durable throughout the country, but particularly in urban and suburban areas. Rural malls have made a big name. Now, rural retailing is an important segment of the retailing industry, and it is only lately that companies are making investment in this area. ITC have now launched a Chapel Sagar, the first rural mall with a variety of product offering the farmer tool to adapt a new technology and methods of farming and selling their production. Godres has opened Adar, a one stop shop for farmers focusing on farm related products. Escorts and Tata Chemicals are also in the process of setting up agri stores and targeting the rural market. The next are the neighboring food stores. From trading posts and limited line stores, develop a neighborhood or convenience store that do maximum retail business. Chain organization belong to the first venture large scale retailing. It is defined as two or more stores similar in nature and having common ownership and they are of two types voluntary chain and cooperative chain a voluntary chain is one which has been organized by the wholesaler who enters a contractual agreement or the arrangement with the individual retailer requiring that all purchases are, are being made from the wholesaler a cooperative chain is one where the retailers join together and operate their own warehouse 
The next are the departmental store. A departmentalized retail store which brings many limited line operations under one roof with a common ownership. They actually deal with convenience and shopping goods. Example would be Bloomingdale and Canon departmental stores and many other follow. The uniqueness of this particular store includes many types of merchandise such as clothing, furnishing, small wares etc. Orderly arrangement and one stop shopping. Segregation of merchandise like we have for men and women, kids, furniture, cosmetics but depends on the site of the store. May also have leased departments like opticals, beauty salons, jewelry, religious articles, meat and poultry, bakery, silverware etc. Lease departments, they are altered by independent retailers, chain owners and because of the nature of goods and service warrant unusual specialized ability. Therefore, the department is usually leased. Speciality of the departmental store include free delivery, gift wrapping, charge accounts or change accounts, return privileges and extended credit plans etc. Unusual ones including the personal shoppers, babysitting while parents are shopping, procurement of tickets for theatrical and sporting events etc. Such specialty stores deal only with shopping goods unlike the neighborhood stores that deal with the convenience goods. Sub-specialization offer one narrow classification, the not shop and the exclusive for ties. Supermarkets. These are the departmentalized food stores and all food under one roof like we have the grocer, the butcher and the baker. What are the uniqueness of such kinds of stores? The customer have to use a trolley to collect and pay in the counter and these markets will have ample parking space, lesser employees and insist on self-service. Emphasis is on the lower price, parking facilities for the customer and luxury of one stop food shopping. Many of them offer personal services and customer amenities too. Retailers are also classified according to the merchandising activities. So under this classification, the activities wherein we have the buying and the selling circle. The merchandise, they carry their convenience goods, staple goods, impulse goods etc. And there is also currency volume and number of people they employ. Second would be small retailers and large retailers. Small retailers are the ones get involved in the general stores, specialty store, flea market, boutiques, swap stores, food specialty, quest and the push cart. The second would be the large retailers, the departmental store, lease departments, specialty stores, branches, spin-off, supermarkets, direct marketing, catalog stores, off-price stores, manufacturer outlets, warehouse and general merchandise discounters. Now, I conclude to say that retail landscapes of the country are changing at a rapid pace with the malls and the multiplexes mushrooming in all the major cities. Retail has clearly been witnessing a transformation from neighborhood shopping to the concept of malls and family entertainment centers. So, entertainment and experience are now becoming an integral part of shopping. Global industry analysts have often confirmed the country's potential as one of the most attractive emerging retail destinations in the world. Thank you.